Hello everyone listening on Spotify, watching on YouTube. It's another episode of NRG Insights where we speak to uh, influential people in the mortgage market. Um, at the moment, we've got our lender series um, where we're speaking to, again, anyone at the lending market, just, to, just any sort of uh, tips, hints, um, and challenges that they face. So we thought we'd give them their say as um, most people would have slagged them off. So it's nice for them to come on and have a chat. Um, and today I've got Adrian Maloney from One Savings Bank. So thanks for joining me, Adrian. Morning. Oh, afternoon, Marcus, as it is. Thank you for inviting me. That's right. No problem at all. So let's um, let's start with talk, talk to me about your financial services journey. I appreciate it's a long one. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll cut it down. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I'll try and keep it keep it brief. Probably like most people, I, I ended up in financial services uh, by accident. You know, I finished college, uh, went off for a, for, a, for a summer, sort of crawling around the Canary Islands. Um, came back, um, had a credit card bill to pay, and, and timely, though the, uh, a company at the time called Mortgage Trust was was opening in Epsom, um, and I got a job in there working in the collections team, um, eventually through underwriting, um, and then uh, just at the, the, the probably the turn of the century, I, I went to what was Portman Building Society, still in the underwriting team, but then got my first break in, in it as a BDM for Central London, um, that sort of transpired with the, 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 the merger or the acquisition with, with, with Nationwide and we launched TMW. And then seven years ago, I joined what is today OSB Group um, uh, as sales director. And obviously then, um, I think it's about four years ago now, Precise came into the fold. Um, and uh, probably 18 months ago, I, I took over running the whole of the intermediary um, department, including field sales, telephony, corporate accounts. Um, and specialist distributors. So I'm responsible for, for the three intermediary lending brands, which are um, Kemp Reliance for Intermediary, Precise Mortgages, and Interbay as it sits today. Amazing. That's a lot of uh, lot of business you're doing there. Crammed in quite quickly, hopefully, Marcus, as well. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Well, it's good. It's because people won't know this, but we've had a nightmare trying to get uh, trying to get on. So we're, that's why we're speaking at 1.2 yeah. speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, Adrian, how... How's the, the reason I think it would be interesting to talk to you, because obviously we don't get loads of big businesses. Like, let's just talk about that. So you're kind of, what, 5.8 billion revenue in 2022? Would that, no, that, would, that would have been lending in 22 over 5 billion, Marcus. Um, obviously, we're in a closed, lending, period, yeah. closed period now because um, we're a PLC. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we're, you know, we, 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 we're, we're a very sizable lender in, in, in our own right, yeah. but probably in the specialist sector, you know, my opinion is with a with a sort of super tanker or the juggernaut. I'm sure some of my competitors might uh, might might say they are as well. Well, they haven't come on, so you can say what you want. Yeah. Um, so in, in regards to that, being being one of the bigger uh, bigger businesses, I think it'd be interesting to see how um, how you face the challenges of the last year and that kind of thing. Because obviously, there's a lot of moving parts, right? When you're yeah. you're working with that many people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How well, do you? Well, how do you, go on. Sorry, Marcus. No, I was going to say, how do you maintain the kind of the status quo for a tricky period when there's so many so many people to deal with and such but you know yeah. it's just business on a large scale and yeah i guess having a family of brands help because they do they do complement each other they, they 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 cross over in some 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 markets i all three brands do an element of of buy to let but they're kind of targeted at, at, at different customers and it's about you know in a changing market keeping those brands relevant in different sectors as well so you know you see precise mortgages is it, it, you know, it has a really good reputation in, in residential lending as, as well as buy to let. But, you know, for those, I yeah. guess, people with credit blips, which we've seen more of in a, a cost of living um, uh, crisis, and, um, you know, Kemp Reliance we, for intermediaries, the amount of repeat borrowers that we, we have in there and in, in investor world is, is phenomenal, probably more than, 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 than most of the other lenders. You know, they come back to us time and time again because of that, personal uh, approach with a skilled sales team um yeah our underwriters so i mean how, how do you keep that personal approach when it's a, it's a it's a monster now isn't it like yeah. how, how does it well, well, we, 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 so so two years ago was it was it two years ago i had probably had some black hair left left it then as we came out of covid we we, we ran the, the sales team separately um, so we had a precise sales team a, a kemp reliance sales team and, and the interbay sales team as it as it was then um, you know, we, we sat back and reflected and, and Simon Cockrell, who works with me, me and him, put together a, a, a sort of motion to dual brand those sales into open more doors. So there was an element of efficiency, 
but an element of growing expertise because instead of having seven people, for example, selling precise in the field and seven selling Kent, we were able to go 14 selling both, I think it was on on, on the day. And then we built the, the, the tele telephony piece, which meant we had a much wider reach and we're able to get a much wider message about what we did in each brand. So, you know, part of the aim with that would be if you went in, in, in with, with your, your precise head on and the rate was slightly cheaper, but you needed the flexibility of Kent, you weren't saying, ring my friend Marcus. Um, yeah, yeah, in between yeah. that time, my, your, your, your friend Adrian came in from another lender and grabbed that business. So it was building that expertise over, over the sales team, but also, you know, they are different in that you can shape a case in, in the Kemp brand. You've got a bit more flexibility. It's not as machine um, led. But also, you know, we, we, we evolved it. We launched a high net worth team, which deals with our borrowers that have over five million out with the, the, the business. You know, I go and see borrowers of that size with the brokers so that they've got a relationship with people inside of the bank. And I don't think anyone else in the specialist lending space does that. So it's, you know, how do you make yourself different? How do you, you know... I, I always sort of people say to me, you know, what are you doing this year? I said, I want to do what we did well last year, but better again. And you know, that, that drives me, you know, the, the, the experience, you know, people having the experience, wanting to come back and deal with you again and knowing key people in our business. So, so, so on that subject about being better, how is it kind of, is it just a marginal gains thing for you across the board? Or do you look at something specific and go, that's, we're going to be, no, 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 you, 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 you know, I, I, we were talking about playing football before, before this. And, you know, I'm probably like you, I'm, I'm, you know, I used to play with a team of 11 bad losers. So, you know, wanting a win all the time is, 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 is it, you know, it, 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 it kind of focuses my mind. And, you know, I, I, look, I looked at the market last year and we, we, we went, actually retention business is going to be big. PTs keeping keeping yeah, your clients, yeah, keep the you know, not letting your com competitors come and come and grab them. So how do we do that? So you know, we we, we we got on the front foot with working with with brokers to say, you know, you've got this sort of stuff coming up, and um, you know, this is our retention range, making them more aware, um, and this is what we do across our three brands. We, we 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 have an offering for them, and that was a big part last year, and I think we'll grow on that again this year because you know. It, I, I still see retention, you know, even in a, a probably hopefully a, a better rate environment, being a port, an important part of every lender that offers that it's business. And, you know, we, we get feedback from brokers about those lenders that don't offer that and how painful it's been for clients in a, in a difficult, you know, rapidly rising yeah. interest rate um, environment. And they go, actually, we're going to come to you, Adrian, or, you know, one of your brands, because we know at the end of that period, you're going to offer them something that is... Uh, comparable rates so yeah that, again that'll be a big focus for, for, for us this year but also you know we've got our commercial brand in in, in interbay and we do uh, bridging in in precise that's the sort of, we call them the specialist finance team those those brands have proved popular over the last 12 months how can we do more of that and get those brands front and center again of, of the broker's mind in the product sets they play so do you do that as like you treat them as three separate businesses? Like yeah. How would you get into it? We've got, we got, we got three separate brands. So, you know, in, in long term lending, buy to let and residential, and we have a sales force that sells precise and Kent. And then we have we strangely enough, you said about being nimble and moving. And um, last year the, the, the sales force in specialist finance, um, they both went out and they did Interbay commercial and precise bridging. This year we've got a, yeah. we, we've separated that slightly. We've got three bridging specialists actually. Simon Ward, who uh, hopefully many of the listeners will know, he went away and decided OSB was so good he wanted to come back. He's come back <laughs> to, 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 to join that team because we recognise in, in, in that market you want, you know, subject matter experts who really know it inside and out. And, you know, the distribution is slightly different, making sure they're in and, and front and centre of that. So, yeah, you know, I, I said, how do you stay relevant? How do you stay nimble? You've always got to look at what you're doing. Um, you know, obviously, if it's working, you don't need to, to fix it. But if you can make it better, why not tweak it? And, and how easy is it for you to pivot? I know we just said then about being nimble because it's tough, right? Your big big businesses are harder to move. Um, you know, it's the speedboat and the ferry thing, isn't it? So when it when the market gets tougher, is it because you're working in sort of small teams within it? Is it slightly easier to pivot than say if you were a um, yeah. uh, you know it, 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 it's, it's very different to eight years ago when I when I started here, but it's a much bigger much bigger business. You know, um, mm. I think there's over fifteen hundred people employed in the UK in the in, in, in the in the sites, and obviously we've wow. got the business in in India OSBI. Um, you know, we, we but 
we have a very strong ex-co team that kind of know us SMEs, the senior managers in, in the team. I think as um, as a team, you know, uh, yeah, my boss is, is John Hall. He's the MD of, of, of Lending and Savings. I report directly into him. I work very closely with um, my my oppo in um, in product and proposition. We have a great working relationship. We've worked together for, for four years. You know, our, our group director of underwriting, Dawn Murphy, you know, we worked together 20 years ago, so we understand how each other works. So, you know, whilst it's a bigger business, we, we work really closely to, together. And I think that's what's made OSB so successful, even as it's grown. Yeah. And obviously, it's massively different. So, were they lending eight times more than when you joined? Uh, so I, 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 I think from memory, it was 700 or 800 million. Obviously, you know, within within that time, we, we, we've we merged. I've just done that quick math in my head, so that's probably Yeah, yeah you've done well. Your, your right. maths is better than mine. I, 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 and then obviously, you know, <laughs> we, we lent what we lent in the in the last figures that were in the public domain. Yeah. But it has, it has grown massively. Um, and, you know, it, it's testament that, you know, I don't think we've lost sight of our relationship with brokers or our relationship with our borrowers over that period. Um, and I, I like to think, you know, I, I think, you know, we've had a lot of recognition in um, awards and, 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 you know, not just awards, but in, in, in broker recognition that they actually value what we do and they see us as a, as, as a key lending partner. So in, in that growth, what, what were the, um, what are the challenges from, from going from that? Yeah, so I, 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 eight what, times bigger. What kind of challenges could you do, see over those years? So, 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 so one, one big bit is a merger. You know, um, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, when when Charter Court and and One Savings Bank merged and obviously became OSB Group, and that was the precise brand coming along with Kent and Interbay. Um, you bring two businesses together, so culturally they were very similar. You know, good fit, um, good fit in terms yeah. of the, the the brands out there. You know, you got, you got two of everything when that happens, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, more, more, more is merry. You had two sales sales team. We had to bring them together and actually dual branding them culturally was brilliant because you never had a sort of, I'm, 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 I'm part of Precise, I'm part of Kent. The minute you dual branded them, they go, we're part of OSB. And, you know, right. they, they, it made a wider, bigger, bigger team. Um, but you're dealing with was that people. relatively easy transition with the teams? Was that well, quite a so much? Was, was that relatively smooth transition with the teams? Yeah, yeah, but look, you know, they, they all sort of knew, knew each other, and I guess at, at one point were competitors. And you know, over a period of time, mm-hmm. we 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 refreshed the management team that you know ultimately now reports in into me, um, and that management team I've worked with for for a very long time, and I, I trust, have massive faith in them. Um, I believe in them. I think they're, 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 they're second to none and we work really, really well together. And that really helped with the uh, bringing together of the, the, the sales team. Now no one even remembers them as separate entities internally. They, it, it's all about yeah, yeah. tomorrow and, 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 and okay, going yeah. on. Um, but, you know, with, with, with that, you know, a, a, a merger came the bits of how do you define the brands. So, you know, I actually find these things sad that I am fun because I think it's an ongoing on, ongoing project and how do you develop and evolve them over time and continue to develop and evolve them over time so that they complement each other and I think you know we're, we're three or four years into that um, now I think we've done you know a pretty good pretty good job of it yeah and where do you see it where do you see the market going this year I know we've um, it's tough last year right now I can say the other day they, they smashed it out of the park but at the same time it was, uh, it was an interesting one where, where do you see it going uh, Competitive, so I think you're already seeing that. You know, the high street have already reduced rates in the sort of prime residential space. The last two weeks have been crazy, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. But well, look, it, 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 you know, to get to get a slight plug in, we've just reduced all our rates on on Kent and Precise <laughs> exactly. um, today, which is which is timely, and we launched our commercial stuff uh, and retention a week ago. I look, I think you know, it, I always, it, uh, the bits I've learned in the last eighteen months in particular is expect the unexpected you know i would who'd have thought a, a mini budget would have sparked what it did and who'd have thought last april we would have seen base rate rise as, as quickly as it as it did but i think we're i think we're at the peak of the rates now so i think rates come down that makes for a more more functioning market they both said um fingers crossed i think that's you know <laughs> the bulk of mortgages are now done through the intermediary channel so it's good for brokers clients need advice um, they have options of whether it's product transfers, Remo, and obviously purchase market. Um, so I, I, I think this market this year, whilst there'll be a lot of competition, 
will be better than better than it was last year for for a number of reasons. Yeah. As I said, you know, rates coming down are, are, are automatically a kind of good sign to to get the market functioning and volume and transactions yeah, yeah. and people making um, decisions. So you yeah, know, you I, think, I, I think we'll have a good run at it. I think we'll have a good run at it because everyone says. I think oh, I can't remember what was there. Oh, Michael Allison was saying at Rome where he said there will be a bump in the road again. So and I said, look, they're, nah, they're, what about just a good year run? They're, 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 I've been in this 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 market twenty five years. I think probably twenty four of them I've seen bumps in the road. Um, and yeah. yeah, that's what makes it interesting. That's why why brokers or the intermediary add value to their their clients. That's why lenders like us prosper because we're able to adapt and support people during. And that was kind of pumps. the conversation we had. That was kind of the conversation we had in that. If you're really good at what you do, a tight market gets rid of a bit of driftwood. Um, you know, the, with the greatest respect, you know what I mean? It does. You don't lose the top 20% of your team, do you? Yeah. Um, and it also sharpens up our tools for when, when the market gets better. So yeah. if you're okay, like when the market's easy, it's easy for everyone, right? Yeah. So everyone, it's, hard to grab a, it's hard to grab a market share when... If the market's going like that because everyone's doing it. Everyone's just doing it. But actually, this was this was a challenging time, but a time for everyone to kind of dig in and, and get a bigger piece of the pie, right? Yeah, I, look, you know, uh, you, there'll always be winners and losers. It's a bit like football, isn't it? As we talked about earlier, you want to be in you, you want to be in the winning camp, um, and you know, certainly that's where 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 we want to be. So you know, I think we're well established, we're sizable, we're scalable, um, and you know, most of all. I hope we've got fantastic people that work here that are out in the field supporting the, 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 the brokers that we deal with, with the corporate accounts that we deal with. And equally as, as, as important, we've got a great back office team, the heroes sort of behind the, behind the scenes that underwrite the deals. And, you know, the guys we've got in our proposition team, they're always looking at gaps in the market or how do we do what we're doing better, that, which is, I think, what I sort of started off alluding to earlier on. Yeah, yeah. In the, and you know that probably be the title of the podcast: how we do, how we do, do what we did, but better. Because that is that's essentially business, right? Yeah. Just getting a little bit better every year. That's yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, so touching on that, the size of it, and like you say, your people are really important, and that kind of thing, um, which is the same for every business. Right? Pe- the, your people are the most important thing. Um, it's like I'm like I'm working in recruitment. Yeah, right? You never but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it like genuinely, is it, how did you get over? having to because not everyone's been in the market as long as you have and I have and, and you know when you know like these things will pass like you said every year there's a bump how do you explain that to maybe a younger generation or like a sales team where they've they've had it relatively easy I would say for the last few years how do you do that kind of reassurance piece and everyone in it together do you know that's 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 a really good question because you know first of all you know if I think back to COVID you know you're immediately taking a bunch of people off the road <laughs> Natural people that go out, they're used to socialising, they're used to meeting people, and you're going, you're going to sit down behind a desk. They go, for how long? I don't know. Um, you know, in three months it could have been, could have, could have been whatever. But what, 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 what we did, I think we did really well was, you, you know, we kept engaging with them. You know, we had regular, you know, I think every business did it, regular catch-ups. We, everyone adapted to using this form of, um, of, of yeah. virtual technology. But we were able to get our guys back on the road earlier than probably others we we, we took a pragmatic rule yeah. uh, pragmatic approach within the rules that we were um uh, allowed to work within um but we also gave them reassurance you know as a business you know we got back to normal pretty quickly because once the valuations were surveyors could go out yeah yeah it was, it, yeah, it was, it was business it was business as usual but we were behind a screen until the the rules relaxed and and and, and we came out of that um, and actually, you know, as we, we, we came out of the, the, the mini budget, we had a good, strong pipeline. We were still lending. Yep. Um, others had sort of curtailed back. We, we, you know, we had access to retail funding, which other specialist lenders didn't. So most, you know, yep. most of the people I, 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 that work, work for me, that what I say to them is, look, in difficult times, you know, if you're sat on choppy waters in the sea, you don't want to be on a little rowing boat. You want to be on that big exactly. super tanker that can can withstand. Yeah, with. yeah. And I think you know they see that that this part that this business, you know, albeit in specialist lending, which is what we do, is a big boat now, and it's pretty safe on there to ride through choppy waters. Nice, nice analogy. I love a good analogy. <laughs> I probably yeah, heard I'm it from somewhere else. To be fair, so um, but you. Oh, yeah. so. I feel that. Well, I've already used the ferry and the speedboat today for the big yeah. one, so <laughs> jumping on the boat analogy. We've got to jump on another one. Um, so again, moving like obviously the buy-to-let market 
um, had its problems last year. Do you, do you envisage that's going to come back um, stronger uh, on I, that I side mean, of things? Yeah, I mean, Marcus, we, we deal with predominantly, um, would I call them professional landlords in, in, in you know, sizable landlords. Um, they, they treat this, the vast majority of them as a full-time business. Um, we, we had great demand for our products last year, as we always do. There's um, still deals to be had, right? If you could get access yeah. to money, there's still I, deals. I, 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 not, like, yeah, yeah. I, I was out on, on, on Wednesday, before we, obviously before we record this, whenever it goes live, with, with five of our largest in, investor clients just talking about the market, you know, what their plans yeah. are for the year. They were all pretty optimistic, upbeat. Um, you know, they haven't stopped buying, they haven't stopped investing in, in, in their um, rental businesses. They see rents really remaining strong and, 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 and growing. So, look, couple that with rates are coming down in buy to let. We've seen it, as you said, in the first two weeks. Yeah. I think, look, I think this is a, 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 a good year for the, you know, and we go, so go back on the track. This is a good year for those winners in, in, in buy to let. You know, we talk winners, yeah, losers yeah. And, and, and driftwood. This is a good year for, for, for those winners. And, they're, they're, you know, buy to let's been stress tested through a couple of economic cycles now. So it's a, a you know, a key part of UK housing that, 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 that can, yeah. can ride the storms. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, and are you noticing that? I know you said like you're big investors. You notice that it's the confidence thing, right? It's not yeah. like money's not going to change that much rate wise is it but it's more of the confidence in the market this is what money costs yeah yeah and you know you, you, you've seen some products evolve in terms of you know yes fees have gone up but rates have come down and um, investors seem to like that because it helps with the yield it helps with with, with 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 getting the loan sizes that they want so yeah the the lending market has adapted and looked at other things that have supported the um the investors needs and you know as i said with slightly cheaper rates um right the way across you know, the mortgage sector, whether that's prime residential, first time buyers, buy to let, that makes a, makes a much more functioning market, um, probably in 24 than we saw in 23. Good. Uh, so let's let's uh, get, go back to the the big machine thing, because I think that's the most interesting thing. Obviously, with with underwriting it, uh, obviously with smaller businesses, it's maybe a little bit more taking a view on stuff. Obviously, as you grow, I'm not sure you can do it. Do you, how, your underwriting decisions aren't, computer based yeah. right you still got underwriters that yeah. have to think of everything and, yeah. um so the question is do you think with all the technology we're getting at the moment that on the specialist lending side you will ever be fully kind of ai driven decision making from a computer can you see that in our lifetime uh so fully computerized i hope not because i like the human, I, 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 I like the human intervention i like all our underwriters that, that, that work for us and if they yeah. listen to this hopefully they'll, 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 they'll think yeah hopefully not no, I just don't, I can't see it personally because of the emotional decision, or the, the variables that, that I, I, are I, I, human. I, I think you know you 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 know you will see an element of, and I think you're already starting to see it of technology taking some of the heavy lifting out of the process. Yeah, and that that should be the case. You know, I don't think we've seen systems in in uh, in mortgage lending develop that much at the same ratio that we've seen in, in other sectors, for example. Yeah. Um, so I think that, that will improve. And, you know, it's in the public domain. We, we, we're working with a firm called Encino on our new lending platform. And, you know, we intend to make improvements that we haven't got on our existing platform as part of that, that journey. But, you know... But that's to add value, right, rather than yeah, replace. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that's but, you know, there, there, you know, there are deals where, you know, actually, and actually the, the investor, the customer... They like speaking to that underwriter. They like having a relationship with the underwriter as well as the the broker. Um, you know, we we, yeah. we, we, we we interview our clients. We, we you know we meet as so we meet with them, and and that's not just about hitting the button on the machine. That's about knowing what their assets are like um, and what their business yeah. models are. So I hope not, um, but I do think you'll see systems improve the the, the journey and actually improve. The journey for the underwriter because you know sometimes systems in the back are quite cumb cumbersome there's quite heavy yeah, yeah we can make that bit a bit easier for them and um, to help them make their decision then that, then i think that's a massive plus yeah you're, you're right as you said then just in regards to the conversational piece where you're talking to investors there's just too many different variables of information to put in to a computer to make it viable as to whether it, whether it works or not even like they're their career history on on that particular on development and that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's just 
There's a lot in there, unless you could. Unless it, but it would have to be a conversation you're having with a computer that could take it all in. Yeah. I, yeah, just, I, I think, I, I think yeah, well, your mainstream vanilla high street lender, you will see, you know, it's pretty automated now. You know, I, I, I did my own remortgage, uh, I guess it was 18 months ago, and, you know, my broker put it in in, in, in in the morning for me. I had the offer the next morning. I mean, you know, that's yeah. pretty phenomenal and quick to, 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 to where it was. Um, but, you know, that's a fairly vanilla deal. Um you know, whereas, you know, as I said, especially... Oh, there's not many vanilla deals now. There's, there's, there's less and less vanilla deals. As it gets easier to do vanilla deals, there seems to be less vanilla deals out there because <laughs> of complex income and, and yeah. that kind of thing, you know, more self-employed, etc. cetera. It's, um, yeah, it's, it, 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 we'd have to catch up with it, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Good. Um, so, any tips for brokers? I'll tell you what I did, I did want to talk about this with people. I don't know if you saw it this year or whether you're that, that close to the coalface, if you like. People going into the kind of specialist market that hadn't had the experience before because every lead was golden last year, right? You had to, had to make sure. So some things you may have given to a packager before, some things you may not have worked yourself. How did you kind of, how did you educate those brokers that wanted to dip into that field that hadn't done it before? Did it become, did it become a problem? Because they see like bigger proc fees and um, bigger deals and that kind of thing. And but obviously 2% of nothing is nothing. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a difficult market if you don't know what you're doing. Do you, do you have to educate those brokers or do you just have to point them towards a package or where, yeah, do, you, look, where look. do you go with that? Because it happened a lot. I, I hear a lot of people going, sort of moving into that market that yeah, maybe hadn't done it before. You know, it, 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 I kind of, yeah, the education word with, 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 with brokers, I, you know, I see our sales team there to help them with our product, our, our proposition. You know, broker, bro, bro, brokers can learn about the, the market them, themselves. You know, I don't see my team as an outsourced training um, the vision for someone, I see them going and helping with our cases. Yeah. The path of which they choose to access access us by is their own choice. So you know, we we have really strong relationship with with you know whether you want to call them packages or, or, or specialist distributors in, in 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 our fields where brokers can go through. They can also access us direct. You know, by to let a lot of people. You know, they know how how our systems work. They have clients that want to go into it. But you know, our, our guys are there to give them the option, not to to, to, to force them down down that route. Um, I do think you know, you, naturally, you see more brokers do more specialist lending because, to your point earlier, specialist lending is 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 is, is growing, um, and yeah. and they familiarise themselves um, with that. And you know, our, our job is to make access to us as simple and as transparent as possible, so that they can make the informed choice of the way they want to 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 to, to access our brands. You know, I, 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 you know, I don't want my guys going out there talking generically about the, the bridging market because who's yeah. the subject matter expert in the generic bridging market? I don't know if it's, a, if it's a BDM. I want them to focus on going, this is what we do. We do this really well. Use us. Um, and, yeah. and, and, you know, for all of the, 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 the product streams in there. And, you know, if we can help brokers that way, I think we're doing a valuable job. Good. Amazing. We managed to uh, managed to get our forty five minutes into twenty eight minutes then by. It, 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 our, uh... it seemed quicker than that, Marcus. To be fair, so after, <laughs> after the technical issues. Uh, <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you very much for that. And if people want to speak to you, Adrian, or they want to get hold of you or any of your team, obviously all the socials for yeah. um, OSB will be on ours. But if anyone wants to get hold of you, what's the best way to? Uh, to speak to you. Look, yeah, yeah, my my email address is is, is there, Marcus. Email us. Well, you know, the one thing I think you know. Having done this for 25 years, people know I'll always come back to them. It might not always be the answer they want, but I'll always come back to them. But, you know, we've also got, you know, pick up on our, our website, whether that's Kent Reliance for Intermediaries, Precise Mortgages or Interbay. And um, there's access and BDM finders there. And whether that's telephony BDMs, live chat um, or face to face support that you want, we've got that in, in abundance with the team that we've got. Amazing. Good. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Yeah, I genuinely, it's good. It's always good to hear that, that bigger business. Um, kind of side of the side of the coin because you don't you know you don't always get to hear it so thank you very much i appreciate it right. um thank you everyone listening as well and watching on youtube um and i'll speak to you soon adrian thank, thank you. you marcus cheers thank you